saw nine of the segments in that one image, um, and everybody basically broke into cheer. In a momentous announcement that's left the scientific community abuzz, the James Webb Space Telescope has unlocked new revelations about the scale of the universe. This pioneering instrument is pushing the boundaries of our cosmic understanding, presenting a universe that is more vast and intriguing than we had ever imagined. What's this new scale and how will it reshape our understanding of existence? The answers promise to be as fascinating as they are shocking. How easily observable is the universe? Picture it like this. It's the part of the universe we can currently see using our most sophisticated instruments. But why can't we see everything? Well, the culprit is the speed of light. You see, light is like a cosmic speed racer, zipping around at approximately 186,000 miles per second. This distance in a year adds up to nearly 6 trillion miles, which we call a light year. Now, the observable universe isn't just a flat disk or an infinite expanse. It's more like a massive sphere, with our little Earth snug at the very center. We can only see as far as the light has traveled since the universe came into being, which is approximately 13.8 billion years ago. This ultimate boundary, the farthest edge we can see, is known as the cosmic horizon. It's almost like looking out to where the sky meets the ocean, except this ocean is a sea of stars and galaxies, and it's about 46 billion light years away. If you think of this as a sphere, then the diameter, the longest straight line you can draw from one edge to the other, passing through the center, would be double that distance, around 93 billion light years. That's an almost unimaginable distance. But if you're into numbers, it equates to approximately 28.5 billion parsecs. Yet the size of the observable universe isn't like a fixed boundary. It isn't a celestial do not cross tape that's set in stone. Remember how the universe is expanding? Well, so is the cosmic horizon. It's always moving away from us. This means as time passes, light from even more remote regions finally get the chance to reach us. So, in a way, we're gaining more universe to observe every year, approximately a light year's worth. Now, what does the observable universe contain? It's not just a black void with a few stars sprinkled here and there. It's actually brimming with approximately 2 times 10 to the power of 23 stars, housed within around 2 times 10 to the power of 11 galaxies. And that's not all. There's dark matter and dark energy, mysterious components that we're still trying to understand. And in some intergalactic gas, cosmic dust, high energy cosmic rays, neutrinos, and other forms of matter and energy, then you've got quite the cosmic cocktail. And just how dense is the observable universe? Well, despite all these celestial bodies and exotic particles, the average density is incredibly low, around 9.9 .9 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms per cubic meter. To give you a sense, it's about the equivalent of six hydrogen atoms in a cubic meter. So while the universe is vast, in terms of actual stuff, it's a lot less crowded than you might think. Finally, let's talk temperature. The average temperature of the observable universe is about 2.7 kelvins, which is phenomenally cold, about minus 458.8 degrees Fahrenheit. This chilling temperature is a telltale sign of the cosmic microwave background radiation, a sort of afterglow of the Big Bang, still lingering around after all these billions of years. So what do we mean when we say the whole universe? Well, it's all that exists. Space, time, matter, energy, everything. However, it's a little more complex than the observable universe we talked about before, mainly because we don't know whether it's finite or infinite, or if it has a boundary or a center. Imagine for a moment that the whole universe is finite. That means it has a set size and shape, and there's a limit to how far we can go in any direction. But this doesn't mean that it has to have an edge or an outer boundary. Picture it like the surface of a balloon or a donut. If you keep traveling in one direction, you eventually circle back to your starting point, despite never hitting a wall or an edge. On the other hand, if the universe is infinite, it's limitless, stretching on forever in every direction. That could mean countless stars and galaxies beyond our cosmic horizon, maybe even regions with entirely different laws of physics. So, how do we figure out the size and shape of the whole universe? You see, to start uncovering the mysteries of the universe's size and shape, we need to look at its geometry and rate of expansion. And these are determined by what the universe is made of, a cosmic mix of matter and energy, and its density. Just like detectives piecing together clues, cosmologists use various models and observations 
to estimate these factors and test different theories about the universe's nature. Currently, the cosmology world is all abuzz about a model called Lambda Cold Dark Matter, or Lambda CDM for short. It's a bit like the current IN theory. This model paints a picture of a universe that is flat, homogeneous, and isotropic, and under the sway of two intriguing and elusive substances, dark energy and dark matter. Based on this model, the universe's density hovers around 1, placing it near a critical density, a delicate balancing act. It's like a tightrope walker delicately poised between having enough mass to halt the universe's expansion and not having enough, leading the universe to expand forever. The model also proposes a Hubble constant, the rate of the universe's expansion at about 70 km per second per megaparsec, suggesting that the universe isn't just expanding, it's accelerating. Finally, the cosmological constant, which stands for the density of dark energy, is approximately 0.7. So, are you ready for a mind-boggling fact? If we play around with these figures, some cosmologists estimate that the whole universe might be an astounding 250 times larger than the observable universe, and it might be even larger or potentially infinite. But let's temper that excitement with a note of caution. These are rough estimates resting on assumptions that might not hold water beyond our cosmic horizon. Now, there's another fascinating way scientists are trying to size up the universe. They're listening to the cosmic whispers of the past, specifically the cosmic microwave background radiation. It's like a gentle hum from the universe's infancy, a residual glow of light emitted shortly after the Big Bang. It fills up every nook and cranny of the observable universe with an incredibly uniform temperature that's roughly minus 454.8 degrees Fahrenheit. But within this uniformity, there are minor variations like gentle waves on an otherwise still ocean. These subtle variations provide invaluable insights into the universe's density, composition, and geometry. One standout feature of these variations is known as baryonic acoustic oscillations. It's a mouthful, but it essentially refers to sound waves that traveled through the primordial plasma before the universe became transparent to light. These sound waves left their footprints on the universe's matter and radiation distribution, creating a unique pattern of peaks and troughs in the CM-BR spectrum. This pattern, like a cosmic rhythm, gives us the sound horizon, a distance between peaks and troughs that's about 490 million light years today. And we know all of this because of NASA's groundbreaking missions. NASA's COBE, the Cosmic Background Explorer, launched in 1989, was the first to detect CMBR fluctuations. Then came NASA's WMAP, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, launched in 2001, which created detailed maps of these CMBR fluctuations. Following these was the Planck mission, launched by the European Space Agency in 2009, which delivered even more precise maps of these fluctuations. We also have the Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, or BOSS for short, which was part of the third Sloan Digital Sky Survey. It measured BAO from shifts in the colors of galaxies between 2009 and 2014. This work was continued by the Extended Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, or EBOSS, as part of SDSS-4, which measures BAO from shifts in the colors of both galaxies and distant, brilliant objects called quasars. But those aren't the only ways scientists measure the distance across the cosmos. There is another method they call standard candles. In the context of astronomy, standard candles are celestial objects with a known or calculable intrinsic brightness or luminosity. This predictability is an invaluable tool for scientists because if they know how bright an object truly is, they can measure its apparent brightness from Earth and use the inverse square law to figure out its distance. Now, the inverse square law sounds fancy, but it's based on a simple principle. The brightness of an object decreases as the square of the distance you move away from it. It's like walking away from a lamppost at night. The further you walk, the dimmer the light appears. One stellar example of a standard candle is the Type 1a supernova. This is a specific kind of stellar explosion involving a white dwarf star siphoning off mass from a nearby companion star until it can't handle any more and explodes spectacularly. What makes them so useful is that these supernovas have an incredibly consistent peak luminosity, about 5 billion times that of our Sun. This allows scientists to measure their apparent brightness from Earth and estimate how far away they are, sometimes up to several billion light years. But the usefulness of Type 1a supernovae doesn't stop at just measuring distances. 
They also play a key role in determining the rate of expansion of the universe. Scientists do this by comparing the supernova's apparent brightness with its redshift, a shift in its light spectrum caused by the Doppler effect that provides a measure of its speed and direction of motion. Some really significant missions and projects have made great strides using Type 1a supernovae to gauge cosmic distances and expansion rates. The Supernova Cosmology Project, led by Saul Perlmutter, used data from a variety of telescopes and satellites to make a landmark discovery in 1998. The universe's expansion is accelerating. The high z supernova search team headed by Brian Schmidt and Adam Rees independently made the same groundbreaking discovery the same year. The beloved Hubble Space Telescope launched by NASA in 1990 has observed hundreds of Type 1a supernova in distant galaxies. Meanwhile, the Supernova Legacy Survey, a collaboration between Canadian and French scientists, used data from the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope to measure the universe's expansion rate between 2003 and 2008. Then there's the Dark Energy Survey, an international collaboration that's been using the Victor M. Blanco telescope to measure the expansion rate of the universe since 2013. Scientists also use the oldest stars as cosmic timekeepers to estimate the age of the universe. You see, just like us, stars have a lifespan. Their age depends on their mass and composition. Stars with less mass and fewer metals tend to have longer lifetimes than their more massive, metal-rich counterparts. So, by identifying stars that are nearing the end of their life cycle, scientists can figure out how long they've been burning and, therefore, estimate their age. Take white dwarfs, for instance. They're the remnants of low to medium mass stars that have used up all their nuclear fuel. Without an internal energy source, these stellar remnants slowly cool down over time. Scientists can estimate the age of a white dwarf by measuring its temperature and luminosity, how long it's been cooling down. The oldest white dwarfs are thought to be around 12 to 13 billion years old, giving us a minimum age for the universe. Another fascinating age marker is red giants. They're what low to medium mass stars become when they run out of hydrogen in their core. These stars expand and cool, transforming into these giant reddish stars. They have a helium-burning core surrounded by a shell where hydrogen continues to burn, producing a lot of energy and making them very bright. By observing their brightness and color, scientists can estimate their mass and thus their age. The oldest red giants are expected to be about 10 to 12 billion years old. Several missions and instruments have been instrumental in our search for the oldest stars and estimating the universe's age. For instance, there's the ESA's Hipparchos, launched in 1989. This satellite measured the distance and motions of about 120,000 stars in our galaxy. Then there's Gaia, another ESA mission launched in 2013, taking things to a whole new level by measuring the distances and motions of around 1 billion stars. We've talked about some of the techniques and challenges of studying the universe's expanse. But now we have a game changer in our cosmic investigations. It's the James Webb Space Telescope, and since its launch, the JWST has been pulling back the cosmic curtain to reveal incredible insights into the universe's scale. So, one of the very first revelations of the JWST was its deep field image, unveiled to the world on February 9th, 2022. This isn't just any old space photograph, no, this is the most profound and crispest infrared image of the far-off universe that we've ever laid our eyes on. It's focused on a galaxy cluster named SMACS0723, nestled billions of light years away, about 5.5 billion to be more precise. The fascinating part is that the area this image covers is about 1 16th the size of the full moon. This snapshot reveals countless galaxies, each at varying stages of evolution. Some are so ancient and distant that their light has been journeying for more than 13 billion years. That means we're witnessing these galaxies as they were when the universe was less than a billion years old. This is all possible thanks to the galaxy cluster's gravitational lensing effect, bending and magnifying their light. Examining these galaxies, the JWST can unpack a treasure trove of information about them, like their distances, ages, masses, star formation rates, metallicity, and even their histories of mergers. It also offers us a chance to trace their evolution from birth to maturity and observe their interplay with each other and the surrounding universe. On top of that, the JWST allows us to track the expansion of the universe at different times, see how it's shaped by dark energy and dark matter, and even estimate the universe's age at various stages. 
It's like having an insider's view of the cosmic life story. Then, on January 13th, 2022, the JWST showed NGC 604, a star formation in a nearby galaxy. Nearby is a relative term since it's a staggering 3 million light years away from Earth. What's more, NGC 604 is full of hundreds of huge young stars that burn so bright they make the surrounding gases glow in gorgeous colors, making for a jaw-dropping picture. Along with that, JWST recently showed us the first close-up look at WASP-79b. What's so special about that? Well, WASP-79b is an exoplanet that orbits a star about 780 light-years away from us. So it's a clear picture of a planet outside our solar system. But the JWST doesn't take pretty pictures of planets, it's much more impressive than that. The JWST measures a bunch of things. The planet's size, mass, atmosphere, weather pattern, and even the temperature, which is a scorching 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks to the JWST, millions of light years away galaxies are not just figments of our imagination anymore. We can look at the far reaches of space, observe planets in different solar systems, and even observe the birth of stars. It shows how far technology has come, and just how curious humans are about space.